What if your car could repair itself? No mechanics, no downtime, no cost. Sounds impossible, right? But deep in Africa, a team of inventors has built something that can make Tesla's engineers question everything they thought they knew. This is the story of the first self-repairing electric vehicle. A machine so advanced, experts are calling it decades ahead of anything the West has ever built. The discovery. It all started in a modest workshop on the outskirts of Harare, Zimbabwe. Maxwell Chikambutso, the mind already known for his self-powered car, was experimenting with a new material, a smart polymer infused with nanocircuitry that could remember its original shape. The idea? To create a car body that doesn't just resist damage, it heals from it. One day, while testing a prototype, his assistant accidentally dropped a metal tool that left a deep dent on the car's fender. But then, something unbelievable happened. Within 20 seconds, the dent began to rise back, smoothing over like liquid metal under invisible hands. The lab went silent. Maxwell stared. The impossible had just happened before their eyes. How it works. The car's skin, as Maxwell calls it, isn't made of ordinary metal. It's a hybrid composite infused with graphene, memory alloy fibers, and programmable nanobots that react to electrical impulses. Whenever the system detects physical stress, whether a scratch, dent, or even a bullet impact, it triggers a rapid energy pulse across the affected area. The nanobots reorganize the surface, restoring it to its original structure in seconds. It's as if the car has biological skin. And here's the kicker. This healing process draws power directly from the car's self-sustaining generator, meaning it requires no external charge. The car literally fixes itself using its own infinite energy. International attention. When news of the prototype leaked, videos started circulating online, showing the car healing from test damage. Most viewers thought it was CGI. A hoax. But soon, a team of engineers from MIT and Tesla's Advanced Materials Division requested a private demonstration. In a secured compound in Johannesburg, the test was held. The Tesla representatives brought their own testing tools, sensors, and cameras. They struck the vehicle's door panel with a metal rod, cracking the surface slightly. But before anyone could even document the damage, the fracture line vanished. One of the engineers, visibly stunned, whispered, that's not chemistry, that's intelligence. From that moment, Rumors began to swirl that Elon Musk himself had sent word. Find out everything you can about that material. The real secret behind the tech. What Tesla didn't know is that Maxwell's team wasn't working alone. Behind the scenes, African universities and independent researchers have been collaborating for years to develop smart regenerative composites, originally meant for drones and satellites that could survive high-impact damage. By merging aerospace-grade materials with energy loop technology, Maxwell's team accidentally stumbled upon a breakthrough that could reshape multiple industries, automotive, aviation, and even medical prosthetics. Every panel of the car is a living, sensing surface. Each fiber is connected to the central AI, constantly analyzing temperature, tension, and impact points. It doesn't just repair damage. It learns from it. For a moment, even Elon Musk, the man who's reshaped industries, had no words. The footage of the African EV spread through Tesla's internal networks faster than wildfire. Engineers whispered in Slack channels. Some called it fake. Others called it the next step in evolution. Within 24 hours, an encrypted message was sent to one of Maxwell's collaborators in South Africa. The sender? A research contact linked to SpaceX's materials division. The message was simple. We want to understand your polymer. Name your terms. But Maxwell didn't respond. The visit. Weeks later, a team of three American engineers landed in Harare unannounced. They weren't tourists. They came with technical scanners, data kits, and an unmarked contract that promised joint research in exchange for access to Maxwell's regenerated material. Maxwell welcomed them, but on his terms. In his lab... Surrounded by prototypes and hums of electromagnetic coils, he showed them the process. One of the Americans, a former MIT materials expert, touched the car's door panel gently and asked, How does it know where to heal? Maxwell smiled. It doesn't know, it remembers. The engineer looked puzzled. It's built with pattern memory at the atomic level. Maxwell continued. 
Every time it takes damage, it creates a digital blueprint of the deformation. So next time, it fixes itself faster. It evolves. What they didn't realize is that Maxwell had already shielded the car with electromagnetic masking. Their scanners picked up nothing but static. He was steps ahead. Later that night, a local journalist reported seeing two unmarked SUVs parked outside the lab, watching through infrared scopes. The tension was growing, because whoever controlled this material could control the future of machines. The world takes notice. The story broke on African Tech Daily under the headline, Zimbabwean inventor's car repairs itself. Tesla engineers confirm footage is real. Within hours, global networks picked it up. CNN, BBC, Reuters. Everyone wanted an interview. Social media exploded with the hashtag, hashtag Africa Miracle Car. In Silicon Valley, analysts began comparing Maxwell's smart polymer to biological regeneration in nature. One tweet from a Tesla insider read, If this is real, we're 10 years behind Africa. Meanwhile, across Africa, universities and tech hubs celebrated the breakthrough as proof that innovation wasn't limited to billion-dollar labs in the West. In Nairobi, students built their own small-scale versions of a healing material. In Lagos, startups began testing adaptive drone wings using Maxwell's open-source schematics. A new wave of African tech renaissance was rising. But amid the celebration, something strange began to happen. Unmarked emails started flooding Maxwell's inbox. Some were from government agencies. Others came with no names, no signatures, only offers and warnings. One message stood out. It reads simply, If you value your invention, do not demonstrate again. It wasn't just a warning, it was a declaration. Someone, somewhere, had already made their move. Maxwell glanced at the message, expression calm but unreadable. They're getting desperate, he murmured, which means we're close. Tawanda hesitated. Close to what? Maxwell turned toward the car, its surface still faintly glowing, a soft pulse moving across the body like veins of light. To proof, he said, proof that this technology can power not just cars, but cities. The revelation in motion. For 48 hours straight, the car had been running nonstop, no fuel, no plug, no emissions. Its power core was adapting, drawing from the electromagnetic fields of the Earth itself. Maxwell wasn't testing range anymore. He was testing freedom from oil, from charging stations, from the limits that had chained energy innovation for over a century. Halfway through the journey, the onboard sensors picked up something odd, an encrypted signal. Someone was remotely trying to access the car's data system. The U.S. investigation. When the car finally reached the outskirts of Victoria Falls, a private jet had already landed nearby. Stepping off was Dr. Amelia Rhodes, a senior investigator from the U.S. Department of Advanced Energy Systems. She'd been following Maxwell's work for months under classified clearance. Her mission wasn't to stop him. It was to understand how a man working from a modest lab in Zimbabwe had outpaced the best-funded research teams on Earth. She approached Maxwell with measured respect. Mr. Chikambutso, she said, I'm not here to take your invention. I'm here to witness it. Maxwell looked up from his diagnostic tablet, smirked slightly, and replied, Then bring your best instruments, because what you're about to see will rewrite your textbooks. What happened next wasn't just a demonstration. It was a paradigm shift. The car's entire frame regenerated itself after deliberate damage, restoring its structure in seconds while maintaining power output. The U.S. engineers recorded the data, and their instruments couldn't explain it. Zero external input. No battery drain. No heat loss. Just infinite regeneration. One of the engineers whispered, This shouldn't be possible. It's violating thermodynamics. Amelia just watched quietly. Maybe, she said, or maybe our understanding of energy is what's broken. The test would soon be labeled a Maxwell anomaly by American observers, but in Africa, it became known as the Awakening, because for the first time in modern history, the world wasn't looking at Africa for resources. It was looking at Africa for answers. And in that moment, one thing became certain. Maxwell's invention had gone too far to be buried. The world had doubted him for years. They mocked the idea of infinite energy, 
called it pseudoscience, dismissed it as a dream. But now, that dream was humming quietly in front of him, real enough to touch, powerful enough to light entire cities. The global aftermath. Within weeks of the test, news outlets around the world exploded. Headlines read, Newspaper Tesla Engineers Stunned by African Energy Breakthrough. Newspaper UN Confirms Self-Powered Vehicle Demonstration Defies Known Physics. Newspaper Africa Becomes New Epicenter of Clean Energy Revolution. Elon Musk, though silent publicly, reportedly ordered a full technical review. Behind closed doors, SpaceX's advanced research division began simulating Maxwell's design. But according to leaked reports, even their quantum processors failed to replicate the energy behavior. No one could explain it. Not MIT, not NASA, not Tesla. The equations didn't fit. The readings didn't match. The truth was simple. Maxwell's car wasn't powered by conventional science. It was powered by vision. The final meeting, weeks later, under the dim light of a private hangar in California, Elon Musk and Maxwell finally met. No reporters. No cameras. Just two inventors, face to face. Elon looked at the car parked nearby, its quiet hum echoing through the metal walls. How did you do it? he asked, half in awe, half in disbelief. Maxwell smiled faintly. By believing in something the textbooks forgot, that the universe doesn't waste energy, it circulates it. Elon paused, processing every word. Then maybe, he said slowly, we've been trying to create power when we should have been trying to understand it. The two shook hands, not as rivals, but as pioneers of a new chapter in human innovation.